Hello, I'm Sky Matsuhashi, founder of SmartPokerStudy.com, the place for poker players who are always striving to be better today than they were yesterday. Poker people, make sure you listen to episode 38. In it, I help Dennis plug his leak of losing too much money in the blinds in my third leak plugging episode. Hey, poker people, it's Friday, and you know what that means. It's Q&A time. Podcast report. One of my favorite, all-time favorite podcasts is the Comedy Bang Bang podcast. If you're a fan of sketch comedy and improvisation, stand-up, and all that stuff, then this is the pod for you. Scott Ackerman is the host with the most, and every week he has a guest that comes in, and they do a free-form interview. Normally, the guest is from the comedy world, but sometimes it'll be an actor or a musician. Uh, Soon enough, though, another guest will enter the picture, and this is often a comedian doing some role, some kind of role-playing, and they all get into some super funny stuff. You know, I started off with podcasts, uh, listening to The Adam Carolla Show, and listening through that, I got exposed to tons of other great podcasts, and I want to do the same for you with my show here, and I would like to keep sharing my some of my favorite podcasts with you. Hit iTunes and try an episode of Comedy Bang Bang today. I really recommend going back and listening to episode 356 with Jason Mansukas and Paul F. Tompkins. So check it out, Nong Man. But let's get to the pokers. We've got four questions today from some wicked cool listeners. The first question comes from my buddy Stan. You guys, do you know where I can find the clitoris? Wow, Stan, that's that's a question for the ages, man, let me tell you. Dudes have been asking that forever, and there's finally a way to find out definitively where you can find the clitoris. Google. Yep, just throw that word into Google, and you'll be presented with millions upon millions of videos that will, you know, they'll all show you right where that clitoris is. So good luck, Stan. Wow, I got to reset after that. Hey, Nong Man. Okay, question number two here. This comes from Scotty T. Scotty T says, Sky, I've been having a real problem with online poker at 10NL for some time now. I started with Carbon Poker and played there for some 10 years or so, never building a bankroll in all that time. All I ever did at Carbon was just deposit after deposit. It was so sickening to say the least. The times that I was bad beaten or sucked out on only made me more angry until I had a chat with a site and told them I was done with their rigged poker site. It's a long story. I am a student of the game of poker and I spend most of my free time at doing just that. Reading poker books, visiting poker training sites, and watching poker videos, etc. I have invested a lot of my hard-earned money into the poker materials. The reason I am sending you this letter is that I have come to my wits end with this whole online poker thing. I can't build a bankroll. There's just way too many fish that will call you down with bottom and middle pairs, only to river you. I am hoping that I could get a little bit of direction from you if possible. Thanks for your time. All right, well, thanks for that email, Scotty T. And wow, there's a ton of a ton of things to unpack here from your email. The first thing I want you to know is that I really believe that online sites are not rigged. I don't believe they have any good reason. They have no interest in making some players win and others lose. Of course, collusion between players is always possible. But it's very unlikely, as all the sites have security measures like, you know, noticing when players play together too often and if they soft play each other, that kind of stuff. It's, it's also possible just like what happened with Ultimate Bet back in the day, that an employee or a founder could have some sort of god code that allows them to see the cards, you know, the whole cards of other people. But if that's the case, they wouldn't be playing at the micro stakes with that sort of cheating power. You know, they'd be at the mid stakes and above, of course, uh, just trying to act like a normal grinder and taking money at the $1 or maybe like $2 or $4 level, you know. But, you know, I'm not trivializing your feelings that you have been cheated, but I just don't think that's the case. It sounds to me like you might be suffering from entitlement tilt or hate losing tilt. I suffered from entitlement tilt big time for a really long time for many years and actually I'm still kind of going through it but only through hard work in my warm-ups cooldowns and keeping in mind you know logic statements during my play time uh, that I uh, that I was able to get over it and you know and in fact I know I'm not completely over it and I don't think I ever will be tilt's kind of like smoking you know it's bad for you and you can become addicted and even when you quit some you know some small thing can send you right back to that cigarette in this case it's like a bad beat or a fish sucking out can lead right back to that entitlement tilt you know i recommend picking up the mental game of poker which i had discussed back in episode 19 as well to help with any kind of tilt issues you uh, that you're currently going through and if you look at the whole 
you know, crappy players sucking out thing from a different perspective. It's a great thing that these players call to the river and suck out with crap hands that should have folded early on. If you listen to episode 12 about player targeting, I told a story about a poker pro who took lessons from an old Asian businessman who crushed his games. This Asian businessman just found targets who wouldn't fold and he overcharged them to draw out. Sure, sometimes they'd hit their draw and win the pot, you know, that's unavoidable of course, but other times he would be betting two to three times the pot and their flush draw and of course remember flush draws on the flop only have a 36 percent chance of hitting and on the turn they only have an 18 percent chance of hitting well the flush draws or straight draws would brick out and he'd take down these massive pots that pots that he built by making oversized bets on the flop and turn against the right players and even at 10 nl the key is to understand your opponents if you're up against a fish who calls down with any draw or with bottom pair then don't ever try to bluff him and only value bet him and when you value bet him make sure you make him bigger than usual if he's gonna pay make him pay you know if you're up against a tight player and he starts to get active after the flop then lay down your marginal hand as you're probably beat you might not realize this but folding can be an exploitative play or an exploitive play if you know he's strong and you fold you aren't giving any more money to the guy so you're exploiting his obvious show of strength by folding and also make sure you have strong opening calling and three betting ranges pre-flop Players at these stakes, you know, the 10 NL, 25 and 50 NL even, they play way too many hands and stay in too long with their draws. You exploit these tendencies by playing stronger ranges and betting strongly to gain max value from them. I discussed this a little bit back in episode 22 when I covered the first skill in Ed Miller's book, The Course. And another thing about 10 NL, the rake is super, uh, it's a super profit killer in the micros. You know, try to get on a site like ACR and get rake, rake back, as this is the way to make playing poker less costly. That's why I'm moving my action off of carbon and onto ACR, as the 27% rake back is a huge discount on the rake. I'm also going to be playing Bovada pretty soon too. You need to do your best to get out of 10 NL as soon as possible and get to 25 or 50 NL and higher. Work hard on your game now so you can move up sooner as you build your bankroll. You can even save money off the felt, then deposit it to get your bankroll higher and just play those bigger stakes with a good sized roll that you saved up off of the felt. And just so you know, the play at 50 NL is not much different than the play at 10 NL. Fish are still fish at all of these stakes. The regs might be better, but just stay away from them, target the fish, and you'll be you'll be just fine at 50 NL, you know? And I hope all this helps. Keep listening to the podcast because a lot of the info I give will help low stakes grinders like you and myself. Alright, so question number three comes from Chris. Chris says, I found your podcast via Reddit. I really enjoy it. Less about specific poker tips slash hands and more about how to intake and process information. It's been great. I'm only 10-ish episodes in. I played live poker with pals years ago, low stakes, and I stink at it, and just recently got interested in, in it again. He's talking about poker here. I found the Hold'em Indicator HUD, and despite the $100 price tag, I installed the trial version. The maths being displayed are a huge bonus for my learning. I'm not yet ready for pay poker yet. I have a grasp on starting hands, and can sometimes understand how those hands change via table position, but I have lots to learn. Are there any other semi-mandatory tools or resources I should look at? Are there starting hand flashcards or something that you can recommend? I think my next step after starting hands is betting, how, why, etc. Right now, I just follow the main ideas of not limping into the pot and betting three times the big blind when I go in with the hand I want to play. Keep up the great work, Chris. All right, thank you for the email, Chris. And that's cool that you found the podcast through Reddit. You know, I'm not a Reddit user myself, but yeah, that's awesome that somebody somewhere within Reddit mentioned it and that you found it. And thanks for listening to that first episode, you know, taking a chance with the podcast. And I'm glad that you've continued to listen. Um, you said you're not ready for pay poker just yet, but you've got to just jump in there and do it because the sooner you do it, the sooner you'll become comfortable with it and start to improve your skills. You can always just deposit like $50 and play one cent, two cent games on some sites like America's Card Room ACR they have one cent two cent or even five cent ten cent and just buy in for the 40 big blind minimum which is four dollars you know four dollars at four for fifty dollars gives you twelve and a half buy-ins not too bad right there you can play plenty um that 50 bucks can last you a while as long as you're playing just one or two tables and you're thinking through your decisions and I just mentioned in the previous question I just mentioned the rake at the micros is a profit killer but everyone needs to start somewhere and these tiny stakes will 
get you used to the software, the basic gameplay, and you'll kind of, it'll help you deal with the variance that you'll experience online, especially once you start playing a lot of tables. As for site recommendations, uh, you know, I've got to recommend ACR, America's Card Room, to start. They offer the rake back, and their software allows for poker tracking software and a HUD. So I would definitely recommend ACR. I haven't played on Bovada yet, but I've heard it's that I've heard that it's good. And I'm moving my action from Carbon to ACR and soon to Bovada, of course. And Poker Tracker 4 works with ACR. And I recently learned that you can import hand histories from Bovada into Poker Tracker 4 so that you could do hand history reviews and work on your leaks there so even if the HUD might not be too helpful on Bovada at least it'll record your hand so you can dissect your play later on and regarding starting hand ranges I recommend the following in early position which is under the gun through the hijack and I take a lot of these numbers and these ideas from Ed Miller's book the course I talked about in previous podcasts and if you haven't read it you have to pick it up and read it whether you're a cash sit and go MTT player the course is one of the best books ever written on poker but in the early position I want you to play about 14 percent of hands and I'm just going to tell you that percentage now. If you want to see what hands I recommend, just go to the show notes for this page, which was smartpokerstudy.com slash pod 39. And uh, while you're there, you can see the different, um, you can see what hands comprise my 14% range here in the early position. In the cutoff, I recommend 22%. On the button, I recommend a 33% range. And in the blinds, I recommend very cautious play, but play just about the same as you would in the early position. You know what I mean? Because no matter what, you're going to be out of position for the rest of the hand. So you want to have a tighter range right there. So once again, all those screenshots are in the show notes for this page. And those percentages are taken from Ed Miller. My percentages before that, like my early position was about 12%. My cutoff was like 18%. And my button raising was about 25%. uh, You know, 25% of hands I would raise. And then, you know, that would just ended up being too tight when I discovered the course and Ed Miller's ranges. I just adopted those and I liked playing a slight looser game I think over time I'll probably up it maybe not in the early position I'll probably stick with the 14% for quite a while now but in the cutoff in the button that's when I might you know start maybe going up to 25 and then maybe 27 28 percent in the cutoff and then the button end up maybe eventually at 35 or 38 percent as my opening ranges you know And what I really recommend, if all of that stuff, if all those percentages kind of went over your head, and for everybody listening out there, I totally recommend going to PokerStrategy.com and download their free version of Equilab so you can create and test your ranges against other hands and ranges. As soon as you get Equilab and just start messing with it for a half hour, these ideas that I have about talking about ranges and percentages of 14% range versus a 22% range, within a half hour, you'll fully understand what I'm talking about. You might not be able to grasp what a 33% range is, but at least you'll understand as I'm talking about it. These these kinds of softwares, Equilab, uh, Poker Stove, Flopzilla, all this kind of stuff just helps to increase your understanding of ranges and how, uh, you know, range versus range and hands versus range and all that kind of stuff. So I really recommend you jumping into Equilab without a doubt. So I mentioned earlier to think through your decisions. And the place to start with that is to make sure you have a reason for every play you make. And you had actually mentioned this within your email as well. But so some examples of thinking through your plays. Let's say you hit the fold button. Uh, Something that you might say to myself is, I'm folding because my hand is crap. I'm folding because the odds he's giving me are bad for drawing. Or I'm folding because he's got a monster right? If you're calling, you might say something to yourself like, I'm calling because I'm getting great odds. I'm calling because my pair is likely good. I'm calling because I'll steal on the next street when he checks. You know, those are all good reasons to call. Uh, A reason to bet, you might say to yourself like, I'm betting because he'll call with worse. I'm betting because he'll fold better hands. I'm betting because he'll pay off with all of his draws. So those are reasons to bet, you know. And for raising, you might say something like, I'm raising because he'll pay me off. I'm raising because the draw just hit and he'll think I've got the flush and fold his top pair. So always, if whatever play you're making, before you click that button, have a reason for it. And what I would recommend is just do a focus session where you play one table. And every time before you click a button, whether it's fold, raise, call, even before you adjust the bet slider to you know, choose a 3x, a 4x, a 5x bet, whatever it is, say to yourself the reason why you're doing your play. If you're reasoning through your decisions, you're going to make better decisions and play better poker than a lot of your button-clicking opponents. 
All right, this last one comes from Jimmy. Jimmy says, Dear Sky, podcast listener from Sweden here. I recently started playing online poker again after taking a break for a couple of years. Discovered your podcast recently, and I've listened to every single episode. Loving it! Decided to purchase the Poker Tracker 4 using your referral link to support your work. Would really appreciate it if you could send a copy of your HUD. Keep up the great work. Best regards, Jimmy. Well, thank you so much, Jimmy, for your support and sending this email and for listening from Sweden. You know, it blows my mind that people from other countries are listening to me, but I really do appreciate it. Um, And as, as well as all the great words, the kind words that you said in your email as well. And thanks for clicking through my site to purchase Poker Tracker 4. It really does help me out a lot. And by the time you listeners hear this, I will have already sent Jimmy my HUD for him to use. So if you'd like copies of my HUD as well, just purchase the Poker Tracker 4 through my site. And you can find a link in the show notes for this page and in the footer of every page on the site. And I'll send it to you. Just send me an email. You know, I actually sent it to Jimmy within three hours of his initial email to me with a screenshot of his purchase. You know, I'm quick like that. And my wife can attest. Challenge! Here's my challenge to you for this episode. If you aren't online yet, get on it. Some of the benefits of online poker are more hands played equals more experience, less boredom than live poker, hand tracking lets you examine your play very closely, and you can play in the comfort of your own home. Now it's your turn to take action and do something positive for your poker game. Do it! Just do it! Make your dreams come true! Do it! Just do it! Do it! (laughs) Thank you so much for listening today, and thanks again to Stan, Scotty T, Chris, and Jimmy for sending those questions in. Please send me more questions and any feedback through the show notes page at smartpokerstudy.com slash pod 39. Or you can also send an email to sky at smartpokerstudy, tweet me at smartpokerstudy, or post in the Facebook group at smartpokerstudy.com slash discuss. And here's your chance, one of your last chances actually, to win a copy of the Freedom Journal. This is a lovely leather-bound book that helps you set and attain SMART goals in 100 days. SMART stands for Specific, Measurable, Achievable, Relevant, and Time-Bound, just like I discussed back in episode number two. I supported this journal on Kickstarter, and I received, I received a few copies, and this is your chance to win one of my copies for free. All you have to do is sign up for a free 30-day trial to Amazon Prime Music through my show notes page and send me a screenshot of your free trial sign-up confirmation. With your free trial of Amazon Prime Music, you'll enjoy unlimited ad-free music streaming from thousands of playlists and stations. Plus, and the best part for you, free two-day Amazon shipping. And the best part for me, just like Jimmy, you'll be helping to support me as this is one of my affiliates and I get a little kickback for each free trial signed up through me. So please visit the show notes at smartpokerstudy.com slash pod39 and click on the Prime Music banner for this killer offer. This contest will run, will run through February 29th, so sign up before then and email me a screenshot of your Prime Music confirmation. Alrighty, poker people, be sure to listen to next Tuesday's episode, The Big 4-0, where I tackle another one of your poker leagues. These have proven to be very popular episodes, so make sure you don't miss it. Word of mouth is the best advertising, and a recommendation from you to your friends would be most appreciated. If you enjoyed our time together and learned a little something, please share it with your favorite Nong man. Until next time, study smart, play much, and make your next session the best one yet. Yes.